Hello friends, The Bourbon Note here. Welcome to lesson 10 in my bourbon school. Today I am going to talk about the various age requirement rules that are surrounding American whiskey. And to help me through this, I am today sipping on a Texas rye, Texas rye spirit rather than rye whiskey, but I'll get onto that in, in a few moments. Um, very nice indeed. So cheers, y'all. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so regarding the eight requirements, there are five different rules, um, five major rules, I would say. And it may sound a little bit confusing and some of these are overlapping, but uh, once you've gone through this lesson, I think it'll make uh, sense where the various rules are. So the five areas I'll take the through is sort of like the basic type requirements, so which means what age requirements are there, for instance, for bourbon or for rye, etc. So I'll take you through those. The second one is the special four-year rule. Um, I'll actually leave the further explanation until I get to that, but that's a special four-year rule. And then there are also some special requirements if you use the word straight on your whiskey label. Um, and I'll also get on to what that means. So you may have heard about straight Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey or something like this. And then there are also special requirements when you decide to use the word bottled in bond or the words bottled in bond on your label as well. There are special rules regarding age requirements. And then finally, uh, there are actually also some requirements if you decide to put an age statement on your bottle, uh, for instance, an eight year or 12 year old whiskey. There are some rules that uh, you need to adhere to to follow that if you put an age statement on, on the label. So I'll take you through these five and then we're through with the lesson. All right, let's look at the first one, uh, the basic type rules. So this is really easy rule because there are no age requirements for any types of American whiskey, at least on the type level. That's right. So if you do a bourbon or rye or a weedy whiskey, whatever, corn whiskey, there are no rules in terms of how long they need to be aged. And actually there are some really, this may be surprising, but there are some weird products out there. Um, I have a label on here um, and a whiskey, it's a little bit of a special whiskey. At first glance you say, okay, it's just a normal uh, label. But if you look at the upper right corner there, it actually says aged for five seconds. I don't know why anyone would want to age their product for five seconds and make no rule. So of course it's just a marketing ploy. The whiskey will taste exactly the same before the five seconds and after the five seconds. But you know, people want to differentiate themselves in weird ways and this is definitely one alley to go through this. So basically, rule number one, if you want to make a bourbon or a rye or some of the other American whiskey types, it doesn't matter how long you age it for, it can still be called a bourbon or a rye, etc. Um, I did say though, uh, this basic type requirements, um, there was a little thing about this, um, this Texas whiskey from Balcones as I was drinking, because um, this thing about there are no age requirements at all. It is a little bit special for the US because in most other countries around the world, there are definitely rules on how uh, many years your whiskey can be aged in order to be called whiskey. In the US there's not, but for instance in Europe, uh, there's this rule, if you put the word whiskey on the label, it has to be matured in, uh, uh, has to be matured for three years minimum. So you can see, um, I actually have the American version and the uh, the European version of this product uh, on the screen right now. And at first glance, there may not be a lot of differences, but actually if I zoom in on the labels there, you will actually see on the one closest to me, which is the one that uh, they sell in Europe, it is exactly the same product. It's just the label is different. They removed the word whiskey because it's not allowed because this particular product is only aged for two years. So it cannot be sold in the US, in Europe uh, under the name of whiskey. And they decided in Balcones um, situation here to rename it uh, spirit instead of whiskey. So that's some of the things that you can play with. So that's all I want to say about sort of the basic rules there. Um, okay. Then number two, and this is this four year rule. It's actually a really good rule. So here's the thing about the four year rule. So if your whiskey had been aged for less than four years, no matter what type it is, less than four years, then you have to write on the label how long time it has been aged. 
And of course, they made this rule to make sure that people that sort of um, sell rather young whiskey and young apparently is determined less than four years old, that the manufacturers clearly state to the consumer, this product has, has only been aged for like one year or two year or three year. So it's a way to protect the consumer, if you will. So any type of whiskey, if it has been aged less than two years, less than four years, you have to write on the label how long it has been aged. And I have a couple of examples here. Um, and I will say it's not like the manufacturers are going out of their way to sort of put it into big bold letters there when it, where, how long it's been aged. And uh, if you look a little bit closer on the label here, as you can see, for instance, the, it's actually a Belconis again on the far left here. It's been aged for 27 months. Uh, 27 months sounds apparently a little bit better than two years and three months. And of course, the peel is just uh, next to me here. It has been aged for two years, so 24 months. And as a consumer, you have to look a little bit to find this. It's not like it's with big bold letters, as, as I said, but they follow the rule here. And basically these two products have been aged less than four years, so they have to put that on the label. Okay. Then the third rule, um, this is a rule uh, when you wanna uh, write the name straight on your label. And uh, as you may know, there will be an upcoming lesson where I will explain to you what straight whiskey means. So I'm not going to steal my own thunder for that lesson right now. I I'll just tell you when it comes to the word straight, one of the packet of rules around straight whiskey is that it has to be aged a minimum of two years. So that's a little extra rule there. I mean, most whiskey products out there are actually aged more than two years. So it's not a rule that is very, very important in terms of age statement is concerned. Straight in itself as a word is very important for whis whiskey as you'll learn in an upcoming lesson. lesson. But in terms of age statement, it, it's not too um, important a, a rule. But you have to adhere to it, of course. If you wanna put the word straight in a label, you have to age your whiskey for a minimum of two years. Okay, and I mean, straight whiskey, if you haven't noticed already, I mean, they are literally everywhere. On most whiskey products out there, they actually put straight on level. Straight is a good word, you know, it, 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 and when you come to that lesson, I'll tell you, it, it's all about controlling the quality and not putting bad stuff in the whiskey, which you actually allow to in certain cases uh, when it's not straight. And as you can see here, most of the products, uh, they have the word straight on the label, something very, very positive that you wanna sort of signal uh, on your whiskey. Okay. Then we're on to the fourth rule. So this bottled in bond. And there's actually another lesson coming up explaining to you what this whole bottle in bond uh, means. And it's probably one of the most important things that ever happened to American whiskey, the bottle in, uh, bottle in bond um, legislation that happened back in 1897. So I, I have a whole lesson dedicated to this very, very important topic. But as you can see here, you may have seen bottle and bond on labels on various products. It's very, very popular. And if you um, do use uh, bottled in bond on your label, then the the fourth rule of the age many here sort of kicks in because it's a little bit like the other four year rules. So if um, you put bottle and bond on your label, your whiskey has to be um, aged for a minimum of four years. It can be 17 years, if you will, but just as a minimum of, of, uh, of uh, four years, right? Um, and then there's the fifth one. And, and you may think that the sort of the heading here, eight statement requirements, what, what do I mean? I mean, is that a special rule? So there is actually this rule that if you put an eight statement on your label, meaning that you have an eight year old whiskey or 12 year old whiskey or whatever it is, then the, the eight statement must refer to the youngest whiskey in that bottle. So if you made a product that consists of a blend of an eight year old and a 12 year old and a 17 year old whiskey, and that several products out there that have blends of, of these different age statements, then the age statement that you put on the label must refer to the youngest whiskey. So that's actually good from a consumer uh, protection per perspective as well. And actually all these rules are just to make sure the consumers are safe and they understand what they're buying. Um, so that actually means that if you do have a product where you put in 99% of 23 year old whiskey and just 1% of like a five year old whiskey, then you have to put five year as a state uh, age statement uh, on, on the on the bottle. No one will of, of, of course want to do that. Uh, they want to do a different blend, not 99% and 1%. 
but the rule is good. It always refers to the youngest whiskey. So that's again, good from a consumer perspective. And I actually have a couple of examples here just to show you how there are differences around the world. Um, to the far left there is actually a great product from Heaven Hill, 17 year old product, uh, very, very expensive as well. Um, and uh, depending on which rumors you hear, there's also a little bit of older whiskey than 70 year old whiskey in this particular bottle here. But at, as a minimum, the youngest whiskey in that bottle is 17 years old. And then I have something next to me, a little bit unusual in a bourbon school. I actually have a rum there. Uh, if you've never seen this product, it's actually a great product. It's called Sacapa 23. Um, and this has been uh, aged using the Solera method, which I'm not going to deep dive into uh, in, in this lesson, obviously here. But for rum and also some other spirits, then the 23 year old rate statement here just refers to that's at least some of 23 year old uh, rum in this case in this uh, bottle here. So you could actually be a little bit unlucky. It's only a few percentages and the rest is much, much younger. Um, and that's why I think personally the rules in the whiskey world are much better for consumers and than the rum world there because it's very, very difficult to understand how old the uh, actual rum is in rum. Unless of course it's a single barrel. So you know everything comes from the same barrel then obviously uh, it's all from, from the same age. Um, so, so I think again, that's uh, very good from a um, consumer perspective. So these were actually the five rules. And if you sort of sum up here, so like an if then a table here. So I, I basically sum it up here. So you can take a screenshot or whatever if you want. So it's easier to remember, remember all these rules here. So again, if your whiskey is less than four years old, then you have to write it on the label exactly how old it is. So no hiding there. And also, if you want to use the word straight, it has to be minimum two years. If you want to use bottle and bond, it has to be minimum four years. And then, of course, as I said, you know, if you do a state age statement, um, then you have to write uh, and, and then it has to refer to the youngest whiskey in, in the bottle here. And of course, some of these uh, rules can be combined. So uh, let's say that you have a, a product, a, a bottle and bond product that is also a straight product. So a Kentucky straight bourbon that is bottle and bond. So straight and bottle and bond. So that actually refers to two rules. And then, of course, the harshest rule always applies. That means that uh, the whiskey has to be aged a minimum of four years, even though straight only refers to two years, because it, as it also says, the bottle and bond, it of course also have to adhere to the four year rule. Okay, right. That's basically it. So very short lesson here. So I hope now you have a little bit of better understanding what the rules are in bourbon and in rye and all the other types. There are no age state requirements unless, of course, you fall into these categories with, for instance, straight and bottle and bond and all the other rules that I explained to you. So thank you for listening and cheers.